We need just one frame. Judd needs to win all of the remaining frames, all six frames left. You would think it is over. But in snooker, absolutely anything can happen. Hello there, folks, and welcome to the final session of this year's Beck Victor Scottish Open. It is part 41 of season three of the Neil Robertson Pro Career on Snooker 19. And for those of you guys keeping count, it's 158 parts of the season as a whole. Sorry, it's the series as a whole, not the season. Of the series as a whole that is going to be completed today. And what a special part it could be. Our first ranking event win potentially since the snooker shootout. And before that, our first ranking event win since this, two years ago. Yeah, that's that's just how much it sinks in. Now, this could be a very short episode. If we win this one frame, that could be it. Um, I had a request from Hayden a few videos ago. Uh, who's a regular commenter on this series, so thank you very much Hayden for the comment, um, who said that it would be great to see an update on the rankings and trophies and all that sort of stuff. And uh, if it is a short video today, we'll definitely be doing that. And put it this way, this comment, that comment was posted yesterday, so you can figure out how far I hammer ahead with the series. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we broke off in the 12th frame. Not a bad break off as well. We can bide our time, we've got plenty of time. Um, but we have got a little bit of a chance here uh, with this red. Playing the pot here. You know, we can bide our time. No need to take any risks. Make Judd make the hard shots. And, uh, yeah, let's see how we get on. One. As I say, it's not over yet. This is an awkward black. But, again, seeing as we're 8-3 uh, up, it seems silly not to go for it. And it's there. Good pot. Not Eight. ideal positionally. I think I'm just going to go into the pack here, you know. Just try and split at least one or two anyway, because we'll struggle with the colour to get into the reds. There you go. Oh, bloody hell, folds. Moan, 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 eh? Moan, moan, moan. That's a perfectly good split. I don't know what I was hoping for if that wasn't it. That's not the best shot in the world, though, I'll... But confess that one. 15. This is a tricky pot. He's lining up the long red to the corner here. Looks good. Great shot. That's a wonderful, wonderful Got myself pot. out of trouble there. 15. But so far, this is your first session of this uh, year's Scottish Open final. So then, the first session was four frames. We led that one by three frames to one. The second session, uh, obviously, we won it 5-2. And, uh, well, this final session, if we win it 1-0 here, that's all we need. We just need one more frame than Judd Trump, basically. At the worst level, I would like to get it done before it goes down to a decide. I don't think I've got the... The uh, correct heart condition to cope with that. I'll need a pacemaker for uh, anything like that. Uh, but it does seem like we're well on our way here. It's certainly not over yet, so don't be fooled. It's not over till it's over. Not over till the fat lady sings the same. I'm going to see if this red goes. Can't tell the one that's fairly close to the pink. And it does. Beautiful. For the middle pocket. Just give the pocket a little bit of leeway. That's a but I'm trying not to say too much at the moment because it's not over, but this is certainly a good chance to do such... Uh, that's just, uh, that like the very thing and finish it off. Every red we get, every colour we get, every pot we get, the longer we stay at the table, the closer we are to winning our second Scottish Open final in three years. And this tournament, as I've always said, I've been badgering on about it all the time. You guys must be absolutely sick of it now. We need to win this tournament. Or else we're going to start really slipping in the rankings. If we don't win today's match, we will lose £40,000. So no massive financial benefit to actually winning this match. Just that it keeps us where we are. In the rankings, that is. I mean, seventy grand for... 
Robbo, I think he'll take that with open arms, but uh, for a ranking perspective, which is all we're bothered about, really, uh, it's fairly important. But we've mucked that up a little bit. We've got away with it. This has been a good break so far, all from one singular red that Judd left us. Whatever happens today, I think it's fair to say it'd be great to take this form into the Daffabet Masters, which we are um, the reigning champion of that tournament from last year. So it would be great to go and win it. Not there yet though, so can't get ahead of ourselves. It's a good shot to get on that red. Needs a lot of power. 49. But we made it. So at the moment, there are eight reds left, so we're not really in any sort of talk of winning the frame just yet. However, palm a few of those reds off, knock them in, and we definitely are going to have that conversation. This looks relatively easy. Again, I don't want to say anything that's going to jinx it here, so I'm being very careful and leaving my analy analytical comments till last. But there are... So there's seven reds left. So let's get my maths head on. So that's 59... 80... Is 83 left on the table? Is that right? Yes, he's taken I think there is. That's now eight less than Judd uh, that Judd Trump can get to. Due to the rest being used. 58. So there's now six reds left. So. Well, that's not ideal. 63. Is the 75 left on the table? I don't know why my maths is failing me today. Yes, 75 left on the table. So, a red and a colour of brown or more, He's taking on the and we are the champion. The no, not quite. Pretty close. Not though. quite there. That was tricky. It's a long way back for Judd, but he can do it, and he started with an excellent pot on the red. One. Well, he's taking it on. One that was visible, but I was going to go to the cushion. Now, he's played the brown there, so... Five. Doesn't want to stay on the low colours particularly. Because it will lead to snookers required. He's only got a leeway of 12 points. That leeway is now only 9 points, of course, because he's potted the brown. Three points less than the black. But well, he'll get on the black here. So can Judd Trump steal this frame? It'd be quite special, wouldn't it? 13. You know, we only needed, as I said, one red and a colour. Well, we missed it, and Judd Trump could win the first frame of this session. And that's a good split. That's a good split. He's got a real chance here. He has got a good chance. Nicely positioned for the red. 20. You know, win this frame... Win another one and he's not out of it. He's not out of it at all. It sounds really silly to say at 8-3. But it's quite conceivable Judd can go and beat us 6-0. And I'm not saying that for dramatic effect or anything. I, I genuinely am saying that seriously because he could do it. He could do it. There's no reason why not. There's 43 remain on the table with these two reds. He's 35 back. So depending on what colours he pots, he's got a very good chance. Now he's got an equal chance on either of these reds. If he plays the one to the bottom pocket, the black pocket as I like to call it, he's got a better chance of getting on the black, and that's the most important thing here to get maximum score, because the scores are quite close, and that's exactly what Judd's doing here. So, 27 behind now, 35 left. There's the red. He's not going to go for the maximum colour this time, though. He's going to go for the blue. So that will leave it... That means he's got to get onto the black Just the colours remaining. to win the frame. 44. But I'll back Judd here. I think he might well make it 8-4. It'd be quite a comeback. Considering he's not been in the frame at all, really. He took that one safety shot, left a red on, and, well, I thought that might have been curtains for Judd. But I'll tell you something. I think he's going to come back. He's the wrong side of this blue. 56. 
not a, not an easy pot on the pink. But it's there. And this isn't an easy cut on the black, but pot this and he takes it to another frame. Well, that's a brilliant comeback. Fair play to Judd. And he wins the first frame of the session. Could that come back to haunt us? You know, we were so close. And needed one red. And that's the best fight I've seen from Judd Trump all match. And as I say, it is not over until it's over. Judd now needs five frames. We need one. So we've got a good opportunity on this opening red. And it's there. Good pot. There's a few chances Judd has left us here. See if we can be as clinical as we were last time. But crucially, it's important to be clinical enough to win the frame in this one visit. Because as you can see, it's no surprise really, Judd can and will punish you. Play that with a lot of left hand side just to get onto the red. This is a little bit awkward, to be honest. Position on the black's not going to be brilliant here, so I think I'll probably play the blue. Didn't want to be that close to the cushion, though. Did not want to be that close to the cush. So, we're going to play it. Just knock this red on. Well, that's not ideal. He's not at all. Not ideal at all. That's for sure. Fifty. Hmm. Let's get the red back down the table. There we go. Good move. Neil Robertson, 50. It's going to be quite cagey, this is, especially because Judd's took that first frame now. But that is, well, no, none other than disastrous, isn't it, to be honest? You'll be gutted about that. Now, can he drop this into the right corner? Didn't leave that red safe at all, and as a result, we've potted it. We've lost the cue ball a touch though as uh, Neil Fowl to be happy to to say. And this was make things awkward. We're not winning this match easy, are we? I'll tell you that much. Goodness me. Now another twist in the tile, the black doesn't go. There's a few things going against us here, but it won't hurt. You know what? I'm gonna try. Get the safety up behind the yellow. It looks like he's trying to get the cue ball Not too much of a risk here, I don't think. We've overhit it a little. Not quite got it behind the yellow, but it's still safe. We knew that even if we didn't quite get the snooker, uh, we were still safe. I think he'd probably hit it that 16% which we'd originally planned. We probably would get the cue ball safe and uh, put Jordan in a snooker, but we overhit it slightly, and that was to uh, our peril there. Still, we're safe. It's a good safety battle, is this? Took 16 points, so we've took two reds off Judd at least this frame. Every point matters. As shown with that last frame, really. This is an intriguing safety battle. It's a little bit thicker this time, and we're going to pay. We've left a red on. We've just got to keep focused at the end of the day. You know, if Judd brings this frame back, another frame or whatever, we've just got to be confident that the way we've played today, you would think we'd get at least one of these chances. 
And we certainly, for one thing, can't beat ourselves about what happened in that first frame. Decent position on the pink here. Four, ten. Well, I think that's end of break, isn't it? He's opened them up here. Should trump. But I think he's been a lucky boy. And apart from a few half chances, which believe me, I'm going to take on. Uh, he's got away with this to a large extent. But it's there. Cracking pot. That's the sort of shot we can take on at 8-4. If we were 8-4 we behind, I'd be thinking, <laughs> no, you're alright, thanks. But after that shot, this is an opportunity. The first time we can kind of pick our own position here. And this might be a peculiar position to pick, but I quite fancy myself at a long pot. Good shot. Knocks another red out as well. For us to have a go at next time. We had the wind on yesterday's recording, now we've got the rain. Goodness me. We'll play the yellow and get rid of that red that we bought uh, up towards the bulk straight away. Makes sense. Can we finish it off this time? I wonder. That's what the thought process is every time, and it might not be the right thought process. Because I think the problem will be, if we make a few mistakes, we will start to beat ourselves up, start to get impatient, which is exactly what we don't want. And to be fair, we've played well enough not to have that pressure. We've afforded that comfort with the way we've played. At least so far, anyway. Played towards the left middle pocket. Get the furthest one away in first because the other one would cannon off that, which 13. wasn't too uh, happy with doing. It's a challenging pot, but the rewards are pretty good. He's an expert long potter and he's taking this on. It's there, cracking pot. Overhit it a little bit, so position's not as good as it originally would have been, but still, it's okay. So let's just get slightly to the bulk side of this blue, and then we're going to have to look at splitting these three reds after that. Not a very high scoring frame here. Actually, I've just noticed that one red will go, which is a little bit annoying, because it's... Actually, it's not too tricky to get on that from there. So after this red, we'll have to look at uh, splitting them up. So play again, slightly bulk side of the blue. Yep, that's okay. Just see if we can split these reds, give ourselves a chance. At the end of the day, if we get to these two reds, we won't need the two on the cushion. Let's see what the split's like. Where's that red ball going? Right over the pocket. So after this red, there'll be 51 left on the table. We lead by 37. Once again, we're close. This blue, and if we can just get to the red on the cushion, it's going to be tricky from here, but we'll try. Blue and the red on the cushion means that uh, Judd will have to get a respot. This hasn't worked. No. Hmm. This is painful in all aspects, isn't it? Really is at the moment. But you know what? Well, it goes half a chance. We might as well have a go. And it's there. Well, I thought, why not? It's one of those. And we lead Judd Trump by 43 points. There are 43 left on the table. This blue for the match. 
just needs this blue. And it's there. And we haven't split the reds, unfortunately. That would have been even better. And I think he'll come back to the table. But have we snookered ourselves? Have we snookered ourselves? Well, well, well. We're not going to get this easy, are we? Replied the swerve. Again, Judd needs one or at least, at least one snooker. Probably two. Depending on where he gets them and what balls. But he's just playing the safety. No surprise there. Might as well take it on. What's the harm? Haven't quite got the right power, but it doesn't matter. It would have gone, actually, but again, we didn't want to go in off. That was what that was designed for. So we're just going to play the safety again. Could put us in some trouble here. He's not going to let this go without a fight. I completely understand that. But stay cool. Play some good shots. And the trophy should be ours. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. We haven't got to worry about getting these safe either. Just hit them, that's all that matters. It's Judge's responsibility to get us in a snooker. Sure, it'd be nice if we can get him in one. That's not our main priority. It's not worked out. So, long pot on the red. And that'll finish him off. There you go. And now we can enjoy it. Now we can enjoy it. We are confirmed to win our first ranking event for a hell of a long time. Sanuka Shootout was the last one. This in Season 1 before that. We beat Mark Selby by four frames to three in that final in Season 1. What a final this has been. Excellent play. It got a little bit worrying there. I won't lie. Even though we had a nice cushion, you just never know what can happen in snooker. As I said in the introduction. But Judd won't be coming back to the table now. We're 60 ahead. There's 27 left on the table. And we've got to that uh, 9 frame mark nice and quickly. We've in 13 frames. The two finals that we've played in this year, we have absolutely stepped up to the mark. And stepped up to the plate fantastically. We beat Judd in the best of... 21 early on in the year. Uh, we beat him by... Was it... I think it was... Uh, 11 frames to 4. So even more impressive on that day. But 9 frames to 4 is equally as impressive. Against the world number 1. If we can keep to show that we can keep showing this in events... Um, we can go far. Consistency is obviously the big problem though. But this isn't a milestone. We can enjoy it while we can. We can analyse what we need to do in future tournaments after sure. But... This is our moment. This is our day. It won't be any boost in the rankings, but it will avoid us losing uh, 40 grand. But we haven't potted the blue. Bit of a shame, really, because it would have moved the pink and black nicely. But Judd won't care, nor will we. We'll shake his hand. And we, ladies and gentlemen, we are the victors of this year's Scottish Open. Get in there. It's not often that we see this. Certainly on this career mode anyway. Our fifth title. We've won the Shanghai Masters this year. We had the Scottish Open to our honours for season three. We kissed the Stephen Hendry Trophy. We've won it twice now. We won the Snooker Shootout in season two. And in season one, of course, we won this tournament. And um, that was it, wasn't it? Was that it? Yeah, we've won five. So one this year, two last year, and two this year. Let's look at that. Amazing, really, that once again, I don't think any of the matches we've played in, in the Scottish Open have got centuries. It's quite amazing, that. But um, we get a cheque for £70,000. Judd Trunk gets a cheque for 30000 which is certainly going to leap him a little bit because he only got to the last 16 in uh, 2019. But a high-break award for Mark Selby, £2,000 for him for that. But we 
walk away with £70,000. And that is absolutely awesome. We are the champions, folks. Just what we wanted. Uh, tournament earnings, though, 70000 As you can see, our highest break was 116. We've got the uh, German Masters qualifiers. Just going to put the matches on to, to medium. And you might as well see who we've got in the first qualifier. We've got Kishan Irani. Cool. Uh, right. So, let's have a quick look at the trophy cabinet. So, we've just still got the four honours. Of course, um, it's a shame that you haven't got a two now by the Scottish Open. But we've won that twice. Uh, we won the shootout. We've won the Masters. And the Shanghai Masters. Of course, the next event um, is going to be that Shanghai Masters. We'll have a quick look at the rankings. Luca Brussels put himself into ninth place. He must have had a good tournament. I uh, don't think much has changed down here. Nop and Syngam are still in 19th. That, that Nimmer Gill's 20th. I feel like that's higher than he's been before. Uh, Ali Carter, 21st. Been a few changes, I feel. But we'll have a quick look at that later. As you can see, um, Judd Trump extends his lead at the top of the rankings after taking it before the Scottish Open. John Higgins nearly in the middle in pound club. Mark Selby loses out um, because he got to the final, of course, in season one. Um, yeah, so we've won the trophy. Um, we add to our ranking events. We've won three ranking events in game. That ties with James Watner, Barry Hawkins, Kyron Wilson, the late Paul Hunter and Ricky Walden. And in our total, uh, that puts up to 19 ranking events. Mark Selby, of course, though because he's won a ridiculous amount of events in-game, um, we'll have an absolutely huge amount of ranking events. So, let's have a quick look at the rankings. Um, so, Judd Trump, Mark Selby, Mark Allen and Mark Williams are the top four. They're all fairly close together. A big tournament to uh, Swerves, and, you know, Mark Williams or Mark Allen are back in it, or equally Judd Trump and Mark Selby can start to slip. John Higgins is fifth. Um, he hasn't won anything since the Tour Championship. Ronnie O'Sullivan... Uh, he's been boosted massively, really, by that win in the Northern Ireland Open, where he beat us in the quarters, last 16, last 16, and then he managed to win the tournament. Judd uh, Ding Jun Wee won the Yushan World Open, but how Jack, Jack Lazowski's in eighth completely uh, escapes me, to be quite honest. Luca Brussel, though, in ninth, and Kyron Wilson, tenth. Um, the three of those quite close together. Then you find us in 11th place, uh, just ahead of Sean Murphy, who's in 12th. Again, he must have had a good tournament recently because he was about 15th. But uh, Sean, Dave Gilbert and Barry Hawkins occupied 12th to 14th. And then Stephen Maguire and Stuart Bingham round out the top 16. No surprise there. But the next player, we've got Ryan Day, Joe Perry, Syngam, um, Anthony McGill, 20th. I feel like he's gone up, as I said before. And uh, we're just going to scroll through the rankings. Peter Ebden, 45th. Tep Chire on New, uh, 49th place. Alan McManus, 53. Ken Doherty, Crafty Ken, 56. Dominic Dale, 66. James Cale, 69. That's a real surprise. He's uh, gone up quite a bit. James Watner, 74. Sean O'Sullivan, uh, 76. Nigel Bond, 77. Jimmy White, 78. Let's see if there's any other shocks down here. Don't think so. I don't think so. As it were, if you like, uh, down here. So let's have a quick look at... What's going to happen for the rest of the season? So we've got the German Masters qualifiers, but we're not worrying about that just yet. Although, quite scarily, that is the next ranking event. Uh, we won't play in the Championship League. Absolutely no interest in that. So we've got the Daffabet Masters. We're playing long matches for that. I think I've decided to probably play long matches for all the tournaments. I think for the smaller ones, we'll play medium up to the quarters. Um, if we get there, of course, and then get to long matches. But for most tournaments now, I think long matches is definitely... The answer. So we've got the Daffabet Masters, which we are retaining our tr uh, our title in that, and we go into that with very good form from the Scottish Open. We've got to the final as well in both years, so big pressure on us to do well in that invitational event. And then we've got uh, three ranking events. We've got the German Masters, which we've never we've never done well in any of these three events. The German Masters, Coral World Grand Prix, uh, and the Welsh Open, which is exactly what I was talking to you about a few episodes ago about the fact that the last few tournaments, international championships. And the Scottish Open, we're up, we were in line to lose a mile of money from the two-year ranking system. But because we've hardly done anything in the last two years in the German Masters, Coral World Grand Prix and Welsh Open, in fact, I think that probably the furthest we've got to in any of those three tournaments is the last 16, um, a good run in any of those tournaments could boost us up the rankings massively. So we've got those three tournaments, and then we uh, go to try and retain our, our shootout title. That should be a lot of fun. Uh, and then we've got the Players' Championship, which... Again, unless we have a complete nosedive, we should be in the top 16. Um, we didn't qualify for the Tour Championship last year because we weren't in the top 8. But there are a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 
uh, five, six tournaments for us to play in before the Coral Tour Championship. So if we play anything like we've played in the Scottish Open, you would think that we might well be able to get back into the top eight. So we'll qualify for the Tour Championship. We've got the Gibraltar Open as well. Uh, we got to the final of that last year and lost to Mark Salby, so we're looking for a little bit of revenge. And then rounding out the season, we've got the China Open, uh, which again, we've never done fantastically. And of course, the big one, the Betfred World Championship. We've never got past the last 16. So we really enter the second half of the season now. That was the last tournament of the calendar year. Um, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 tournaments left. I think we've played in 10 already. Let's have a look. So that's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So it, it's roughly about that. We're certainly past the half season stage. Um, but lots of exciting things um, to come on. I'll tell you what, before we round out the episode, I'll give you a quick sneak peek uh, at my spreadsheet. Remember when F1 used to watch DVDs? Hmm, here's the special features section then. As you can see, this is my spreadsheet uh, for all things Snooker 19. Now, you're watching me live. We're going to put the score in of nine frames to four. We've won, and we're going to put our name, Neil Robertson, in that winning tournament there. So... Uh, tourney winners, that's what we're interested in. As you can see for season three now, we populate that cell. So that means in the last two years, we've won four rank uh, four tournaments. If you want a copy of this spreadsheet, by the way, let me know. It's got all different formulas in there to work different things out, uh, such as ranking money. And as you can see, it's all worked out here. So I thought I'd give you a quick look at this. Um, all of the tournament winners around the, down the right-hand side as well as the left-hand side. Um, so if you want to have a quick look at those, uh, make sure you do pause or else I haven't got time to uh, go for all of them. There's a few events that I had to presume from the rankings because we did get knocked out of a few tournaments early on uh, in Season 2. So the European Masters English Open and Northern Ireland Open. Uh, so I had to presume who won those. But I think I'm right by the changing uh, of the rankings. But interestingly, um, the big interesting thing is that I've just noticed is that Judd Trump has only won ranking events in the last two years. In uh, season one, he obviously didn't have a very good start. I think Mark Salby started very well. Yeah, won uh, four ranking events from the first five. That's uh, amazing. And five from the first uh, eight, that's quite incredible. And Judd won the international championship. That was his first ranking win. So on this uh, little screen here, we've got all of the ranking... Uh, well, we've got all of the money, and then it's split into ranking and invitational. So Mark Salby leads that list. Uh, Mark Allen is uh, in third. Judd Trump in second. Obviously, it's drawn from this. This is what's in order. That's why that's not in order there. Uh, but in the last two years, that's what we're interested in, really. That's what counts. John Higgins, as you can see, is starting to slip. Bear in mind, I, do, I, I don't change the uh, order of all of these, just so it, we, we can see what the players have done in the last few years. Now, Mark Williams um, has been on an absolutely fantastic run. All of his tournaments he's won, he's won in the last two years. So in the last two years, he's just below Mark Allen in the ranking prize money. Um, if we didn't win that tournament, and let's say Judd Trump did, I'll just show you the effects um, that it would have. As you can see, that takes our ranking total for the last two years down to 32,000. Now I must stress that this is just from players winning tournaments. Of course, there's there's little bits and bobs elsewhere, and obviously you get more than £32,000 for a fair pair in some finals. But because there's no tournament tree, it's just a very basic look at what would happen um, if players won different finals. And obviously, Judd Trump, uh, Judd Trump as well would ex extend his lead at the top of the rankings. It would go above Mark Allen to be second in uh, the list. So let's put our name back in there. So in the last two years, uh, Mark, uh, Mark Allen's won nine. Judd Trump and Mark Selby drawn on 10. But Mark Williams is very close uh, very close to catching them up. Ronnie O'Sullivan um, has won three ranking events in the last two years. Uh, I can't think what they are. He's obviously won the Northern Ireland Open recently. What else has he won? I can't believe he's won three in the last two years. I think he won. Yeah, he won most of them in season one. He won the German Masters and the Welsh Open. So if Ronnie doesn't do well there, he's uh, really down to... Uh, Really scheduled to start crashing down the ranks. Let's have a look who else is uh, potentially scheduled for that as well. So the next event we've got is the German Masters. So we've got Ronnie there, Mark Selby at the World, at the World Grand Prix, uh, John Higgins at the Shooter, which isn't massive. Mark Williams in the players, that's interesting. Uh, and then Judd, uh, Mark Allen, Judd and Mark Selby. So really, John Higgins, even though he's not a player that's done especially well in the last few years... He's not really got a lot to lose, uh, to be honest. I think he's plodding along, getting to uh, 
a decent standard in every tournament, but he's just plodding along. Ronnie O'Sullivan, I think I'd worry about him a little bit because he's set to lose quite a bit of ranking money. How much is it for those two tournaments? Uh, so it's, oh dear, 150 grand for those two tournaments he's scheduled to lose. Again, obviously he'll gain a little bit of that back from early rounds, but if he goes out in the last 16, for example, um, he could be set to lose a lot of the money. So let's have a look at the all of these, actually. So Mark Williams, 125. So the big hitters, really, the big people that are going to lose money, um, bear in mind, obviously, that the Invitational event of the Daffabet Masters um, doesn't lose you any money in the rankings. So Mark Selby set to lose 100 grand. Uh, Mark Williams, 125. And then the three big hitters, really, Mark Selby's got to worry because, of course, it was Judd Trump who won the Worlds in Season 2. So if Mark Selby doesn't at least get to the final this year... Um, he could start to fall down the rankings. Again, he's got another dent of 100,000 from the World Grand Prix if he doesn't win that. So this is a big second half of the season for a lot of players. And luckily, we can sit back in our chair and think, ah, uh, you know, we, we we didn't get to, we didn't really do anything in the second half of season one. That's the beauty of not doing very well two years later. So thank you very much to season one, me, uh, for not doing very well. And we will probably talk a little bit in each tournament and remind you guys about each player and how much they've got to lose. Etc. Uh, Etc. Et but in the last two years, Kyron Wilson's won, won one tournament. He won the Champion of Champions in season two. Ding uh, won the Yushan World Open. Uh, he's won one tournament, and that's all he's won. Ronnie's only won four in the duration of his career mode. So real supplies. And, we, and with our win today, um, we go clear of Ronnie, even though we've only won uh, three ranking events each. So we've won two invitationals. Mark Allen has won eight. Bear in mind, all of Judd Trump's events that he's won have been ranking tournaments. He got to the Shanghai Masters final this year. But, of course, couldn't win that. I wonder who was in that one. Oh, yeah, me. But uh, having all your events as ranking is obviously quite important, a higher proportion at least. Uh, but uh, the two tournaments that Sean and Kyron have won have been invitational. That's why they haven't really propelled at the rankings too much because Sean Murphy and Kyron, with that 200 and 100,000, with six figures on their ranking total, we'd be quite worried and looking quite a way uh, behind us. But nobody else won a tournament yet. It's a little bit of a shame to see. But this is definitely an exciting second half um, to the season. Let's just throw a situation in there, shall we? Let's see what it would look like if we won the German Masters. Let's just see. Let, let's humour ourselves. See what we can do. So, that would put us up, obviously, another £100,000 in the rankings. Ronnie would start to look a little bit worried because he'd lose that that money. Is it 100000 I don't think it is. Is it hundred? I can't remember now. Or is it eighty? Yeah, it's eighty. Right. Okay. So again, we, we'd gain £80,000. That would be really solid for us in the rankings. We only got to round one. There you go, the last 32 in season one. So we, we've really got nothing to lose and absolutely everything to gain. Um, yeah, so this is interesting. A lot of big hitting tournaments in the next few months to come up. And I hope you guys are looking forward to those. So uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed the Scottish Open. We are the champions, which is absolutely fantastic news to hear. We've got plenty of tournaments to go this season yet, as you can see. Uh, we've got 10 tournaments left that we're going to play in at least. I think we'll play in the Gibraltar just to see if we can win it. At the end of the day, try and get that tournament in our in our uh, trophy cabinet. But a lot of opportunities will be defended our Daffabet Masters uh, in the next episode. So basically, what I'm trying to say to you guys, there's a lot to look forward to in season, in season three now. Uh, two wins so far. Uh, we've got to the semi-final twice. We've got to the quarter-finals four times. Really, the English Open was our only massive dip. But if you've enjoyed that, make sure to leave a like down below, comment your thoughts as well, and subscribe for regular Snooker 19 content on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and on a Sunday. And until the next time, make sure you continue to stay safe, take care, and I'll see you guys at the Alley Pally for the Daffabet Masters. Goodbye for now.